Chris here and welcome to my channel. And welcome to my winter covers reading vlog wrap up. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to call this. You'll know when you see it as I post it, but I'm basically going to try something different this time. And instead of doing my wrap up after I've read all five books, I'm going to kind of try to do it as I read them. I've already read two of them. So I'm a little behind on this, but I came up with the idea as I was reading the second one and realized how much easier it would be if I talked about them as I went. So I'm going to dive in and fill you in on the two I have read. And then hopefully when I'm reading book three, I can give you more thoughts as I'm reading. So first up, we have Ruby in the Sky. And this was set in the season of winter. And in this book, we're following a young girl named Ruby who has moved to a new town with her mother and her mother is quickly arrested and she doesn't want her classmates to know about it. She also doesn't want them to know what happened to her dad and she really just doesn't want to make friends. She kind of wants to blend into the background because she figures we're not going to be here long because she and her mother have been moving around a lot so why get attached to anybody? She is given a project at school where she has to do a report about a famous person and she isn't interested in doing it because she figures by the time the report is actually due she won't be there anymore. And during this process, she ends up befriending a kid named, let's see, Ahmad Salim. Hopefully I said that right. He's a Syrian refugee and he is not the most popular kid in class. And she also ends up befriending the local bird lady. Soon the local bird lady, Abigail and Ahmad are her friends. And Ruby has to deal with that. She has to come to terms with the things people are saying about her mom and about Abigail and about her and Ahmed. And I really, really loved this book. I loved getting to see Ruby's journey and see her kind of struggle with getting attached to people when she doesn't want to because she assumes they're going to be leaving soon. I loved seeing her struggle with her relationship with her mom because she felt like her mom was just making all these decisions and not cluing her in on any of them. And Ruby didn't think that was fair. I loved seeing Ruby's journey through this report because she has to do a report about a famous person. And I love seeing her discover more about herself as she works on that report. I really, really loved this middle grade contemporary and I would highly recommend it. I gave it five stars and it was just overall a really good read and it was sent in winter. So I'm one for one. The second book I read was Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. And this book was set in winter. I ended up giving this book one star. I absolutely hated it. I think if I hadn't been reading it for my winter covers vlog, I would have DNF'd it because I just was not into this book at all. We follow two characters. I think Adam and Amelia. Yes, Adam and Amelia. They want a trip for like a weekend away in Scotland and their marriage has been having some massive problems and we kind of get to see that demonstrated, but neither Adam nor Amelia comes across as a very likable character as we get scenes from both of their points of view. We also get to see letters that were written to Adam by his wife that she never ends up giving him. And those are interspersed between the chapters. And then partway through the book, we meet another character and we start getting chapters from their point of view. And I just didn't find any of the characters who we were following enjoyable. I didn't enjoy the twists or turns in this book. I just was not a fan of this story at all. And like I said, I think I think I would have DNF'd it. I was tempted, even with it being a winter cover, because I knew it was sent in winter, and that was the big thing I needed to know. But I pushed through it, and it just was not the book for me. I know a lot of people really like this, and I can't figure out why, because I purposely not watched reviews on it because I knew it was going to be a winter cover. So I have no idea why people enjoyed this book, but I hated Adam. I hated Amelia. I was not invested in the story. I didn't like the twist. This book was not for me, but... On the bright side, it was set in winter, so I am now two for two. So it is March 28th, and I have a mega update for you when it comes to my winter covers. First up, I have read the entirety of Wildwood. In this book, we're following a young girl named Prue whose baby brother is kidnapped by a bunch of ravens and brought to the impassable wilderness. She decides she's going to go rescue him, and along the way, picks up a classmate named Curtis, and they trek into the impassable wilderness, where they had been warned not to go to try to rescue Prue's baby brother. Once there, they get way more than they bargained for and have to find a way to save Prue's baby brother while dealing with the crazy world they found themselves in in the impassable wilderness. So this book does not take place during winter. 
in the very beginning of the book, it says, True, it had been a little gray when Prue woke up that morning, but what September day in Portland wasn't? So this book takes place in September, so not winter. I really enjoyed this book. I was a little unsure when I started it, but I ended up really enjoying it by the end. I think that Prue and Curtis are such interesting characters to follow because it's dual perspective, so we get to see things from both their points of view. I thought The Impassable Wilderness was quite the interesting place and it was very fun to go on this adventure with them as they both worked to try to save Prue's baby brother. Despite its size, this book flew by and what is interesting is that we do have these like black and white illustrations, but every once in a while we get a full page color illustration. And I thought that added quite a bit to the book and I really enjoyed the illustrations. I will definitely be continuing on with the series. So I am a little sad that I was wrong that this wasn't set in winter. This not being set in winter makes me two for three because I believe if memory serves that both Ruby in the Sky and Rock, Paper, Scissors are both set in winter. So two for three so far. Next, I read Freya and the Magic Jewel. And in this book, we're following 12-year-old Freya who lives in Vanaheim and ends up being summoned to go to a school in Asgard. So this takes place in the land of like the Norse gods. And there are instances that make me believe it could be wintertime, but I don't know whether it counts. Because technically this is a completely different world. It's not taking place in our world. Though there is mentions of snow, so I'm going to count it, but I'm not 100% sure because the word winter is never used a month is never used and they're technically living in another world. So I don't know if that's completely accurate, but given the amount of snow that is mentioned, I'm going to say, yes, this does take place in winter. So like I said, we're following a young girl named Freya who is now going to be going to school in Asgard. She was from Vanaheim and Vanaheim and Asgard just finished up a war. And this kind of tweaks some Norse myths. So if you're familiar with with that, then some of this might be familiar to you. I was. So there were instances where they mentioned Norse myths that I was aware of. And so I kind of knew what was going on there. This wasn't my favorite book, but I do think I might continue on with the series. I can see this being a series that I at some point passed to the little ones in my life because while it wasn't my favorite series, I don't think I found anything super objectionable about it. So I see no reason why I wouldn't recommend it to a middle grader. I think it's more of a, it didn't work for me as well as other middle grades do being an adult, but I do think a middle grader might really, really enjoy this. It was interesting to see Freya interact with these new people because in her world, the, uh, like her and the other worlds don't really mix. So she's going to the school that has kids from all of the worlds. And it is interesting to see them try to coexist. And it's also interesting to see characters from Norse mythology that I knew stuff about pop up in this book and see how they were portrayed here. So I enjoyed this book. I will probably continue the series. And like I said, I'm counting it as being set in winter. So that makes me three for four. Not bad. And finally, I'm reading The Boundless. And I don't think this is set in winter. I think the very beginning suggested that it was set in winter. And then we had a three-year time jump, like after the first chapter or two. And there is nothing so far that I've read after the time jump to suggest that we're in the midst of winter. So I think I'm going to have to say no on this one. So in this book, we're following a boy named Will who is on the maiden voyage of the Boundless. And on the Boundless, one of the cars contains priceless treasures of which Will is aware of. And unfortunately, he also becomes aware of somebody who is trying to rob this train compartment. And the robber becomes aware of the fact that Will knows of his existence. And therefore, he is now in the crosshairs of this robber and is trying to hide on the train and successfully get through the maiden voyage and alert the authorities to the fact that somebody is trying to rob the train, but he has no idea who on this train he can trust. And this train is huge. So there's people everywhere and... We're kind of following his adventures as he tries to stay one step ahead of this sinister foe who wants to see him dead. I'm on page 214, so I don't have that much more to go. And 
it is a historical fiction because it's set in the past, and I'm not quite sure how else to mark it. On Goodreads, it says it's both a fantasy and a mystery, and I can't figure out the fantasy part other than the fact that there are definitely Sasquatch in this book. Like, that is a confirmed, definite thing, and I could see that maybe being the fantasy twist, and I don't quite know what the mystery is because we're aware of who's trying to kill him. So it's not like we're trying to figure out who the bad guy is. We're just trying to figure out who else on the train can't be trusted. So I don't know. It's it's an odd book that I wouldn't really know how to classify other than historical fiction. Maybe adventure because we're kind of on this train adventure and he's trying to stay one step ahead of everybody. So I don't know. I'm I'm enjoying it. It's a rather quick read and I'm curious to see how it ends. But like I said, it does not take place in winter as far as I can tell, except for that first little bit, like the prologue. Oh, I think I'm going to have to say no on this one. So that's three out of five of the covers I picked that are set in winter. Not bad, especially considering the fact that this has at least a little bit of winter elements. I think that makes sense as to why maybe we're seeing trees covered in snow on the cover. So not bad. I will be checking back in to wrap this video up where I will tell you what I thought of this and then give you my final ratings for all five books that I read for this vlog. So this is a clip I did not intend to film. I am technically editing Chris. I was editing this vlog so that I could post it today. It is still planned to go out today, hopefully. And I realized that I'm completely missing the end of the video. I have no idea where the clip is. I remember filming it, but I have no idea what happened to the clip. So I'm going to have to redo that clip, obviously, because I have no wrap up to this video. So last time I checked in with you, I had read about 200 pages of The Boundless. I've obviously finished it since then. And I'm going to say my final decision is that it is not set in winter. There are definitely instances of Will being out in the snow, but I don't necessarily think that's because it's winter. He goes on this journey on the Boundless, and there are points where he mentions being outside, and he does not do anything that makes me think it's winter, but then he mentions, like, trekking uphill, so I'm wondering if the reason he's in snow there and it's snowing is because he's in a higher elevation where it might be snowing even if it's not technically still in winter. So, I'm going to say no because I don't think it was winter, but it could be. But they never say anything definitive one way or another as to exactly when in the year this book takes place. So there are definitely fantastical elements to this now that I'm done. So it's historical fiction and it's fantasy. I don't know that I would market it as mystery. I think I would classify it as a historical fiction fantasy. And probably on the boundary of the upper end of middle grade and the lower end of YA just due to some of the things that happen in this book. It was a really easy read. Like, it was really easy to to get through. And I thought Will was an interesting character and I liked getting to see him interact with the people he met on the train. But it wasn't necessarily my favorite book I've ever read. I'm glad I read it though. I just really wish because of the reason I read it with the whole winter covers thing that there had been a more definitive answer about whether this was set in winter. So now let's get on to the wrap up where I will give you my rating and tell you whether it was set in winter and just do a quick recap at the end. So first up we have Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, which was set in the season of winter and I gave one star, which makes me one for one. Next is Ruby in the Sky by Jean Zulik Ferulo. And I gave this book five stars, and it was set in the season of winter, which means I was two for two. Then I read Wildwood by Colin Malloy, and I gave this book four and a half stars. This book was set in September, so not the season of winter, which made me two for three. Next, I read Frey and the Magic Jewel by Joan Holb and Suzanne Williams, and I gave this book three and a half stars. This book I counted as being set in winter, even though it takes place in Asgard, which means there isn't necessarily the same season pattern, but everything screamed that it was winter, so I was counting it, which would make me three for four. And then lastly, I read The Boundless by Kenneth Opal, and I gave this book three and a half stars, and this book was not set in winter. I don't think, so I'm counting it as a no, which meant I was three for five. Not bad given the circumstances, especially considering you have these two where it's kind of ambiguous as to whether this is set in the season of winter 
And this one is also hard because it's technically not in our world. So whether that counts as winter or not, I don't know. I think between the two of them, one of them was definitely counting as setting in winter. You could give them both half points and I think that would add up to one point. So I think three for five is a fair ruling. So these are the books I read for my winter covers video. Did you pick out any books on your TBR and guess that they were set in the season of winter? If so, I would love to know whether you were right about it. If not, I would love to know a cover on your shelves that reminds you of the season of spring. All of my social media, including my Discord, is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me winter-themed emojis. Like this video and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!